Hey guys, so we are back with our raw, unedited, no music uh, charting videos. So this is a continuation of me analyzing different stocks that got hit, and we're going through it. I don't know. I don't know if this will be the plan, no. But uh, for the first two sets of videos, I did Ayala, then I did uh, SM. For this video, I want to focus, naman, on. Gokongwei stock. So if you guys have Gokongwei stocks, you guys have been following companies under their whatever their family is holding or owning. Uh, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So by the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Marvin Germo. I'm a stock market trader and investor, and I've been investing in the market for uh, more than basically a, a decade now. And the goal of this channel is basically to help you, inspire you, educate you, that you get to trade the markets with confidence. In this particular video, it will be primarily technical analysis, but I have other videos talking about a variety of things as well. So super appreciated if you're new to this channel to subscribe and hit the bell so you get updated every time I come up with videos like this. So let's start. No, I want to start with URC, Universal Rubina Corporation. For those who are new to the markets, as you all know, Universal Rubina Corporation uh, Rubina Corporation is the, pretty much their consumption uh, stock. I'll try to clear this out first so you guys have a better and clearer context also of what we're trying to see here. So number one, I'll try to draw back first. I'll try to go back uh, so you have a clearer view and context of how this will actually look like. So if you notice it and if you try to take a step back, the lo large long-term move that URC had uh, which started from the 2008 crash, which gave the stock more than almost 6,000% uh, gain, 5,968% gain. After that, after hit, hitting its peak in 2015, if you try to uh, draw a trend line, uh, for those who, do, who attended our Stock Smart sessions, you know what it is. Uh, sorry about that. You could connect this particular, connect this particular area here. Uh, there to form what, what we're actually seeing still in a downtrend. So from 2015 to where we are now, fast forward almost 15 years, uh, almost five years already, uh, the stock pretty much hasn't broken out from this funk brought about also by the large increase that it had uh, just over a decade ago, just over a decade ago from the 2008 crash. So what you're seeing here is a stock just continually uh, moving towards its downtrend. So as what I've said also that the name of the game when you're looking at stock market trends is some trends can last for a very, 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 very long time. That's why when people say the trend is your friend, it's pretty true. When people say that the trend is up, you maximize it, you follow it, you push hard for it until you see a reversal. But when you also see a trend that's down, the name of the game, if you are a position trader, is to try to stay away from it until you see a quick reversal or until you see a reversal that it starts to go up as well. So from a trend perspective, uh, for almost five years now, it's still pretty much on the on a major trend heading down as well. Now, there were, there are there are some counter trends for URC, as you can see here. This is one uh, major counter trend, which is quite strong also. If you try to look at it here, this is a 60 plus, 63 plus percent swing. But as it hit this resistance, the resistance of the trend line, as you all know, uh, resistance of trend lines are generally stronger. When stocks hit stronger resistances, there's a bigger tendency that instead of it breaking out, it would reverse and go back down as well. So what we're seeing, this next downward move that we're seeing, from July 2019 to where we are today, this is a recipient of it uh, fulfilling the downward path of of URC as well. So uh, in conjunction to that, the downward move is, is again uh, brought about by it not breaking the resistance or the downward resistance that we actually have as well. So there. Now, so just to, just to summarize it further, for URC, uptrend, we're out of the uptrend. We're still in a five-year downtrend. It hasn't reversed yet. Position trader, uh, no buy signal yet for the stock. Now, if you're looking at it from a quick trading perspective, I'll try to put where the supports are. Support, 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 uh, resistance, resistance, support, support, support. By the way, I'm using chart nexus. So as you all know, these are prices from yesterday. So if today is March 10, I'm analyzing the stock from March 9 prices. But that's what's nice about following the trend or following the range. It it doesn't really take a very you don't really have to see it minute per minute as long as you know where the general trend is and where the range actually is as well. So this is where we are now from a quick trading perspective for URC. 
here's what we do know from the numbers and from the charts. Number one, the stock has fallen below the 148 support level. Now the 148 level is now our new resistance. Then if, if you would like to try to put another smaller support level, there's another support level here around the 135 mark that got broken as well. That being said, uh, a possible retracement based on all of this, that's all of the movement that's happening will be primarily this. Uh, because of the selling, next possible support will bring it to the 118 level. So again, two scenarios, if it fails to bounce from the 118 level and you own the stock or you're planning to buy the stock, it would not be prudent to buy it if it, if 118 does not hold possible narrative for it to retrace, it's, it will go to the 109 level as well. And if you try to put other moving averages in, you will notice that uh, short, mid, and long-term moving averages are all generally bearish as of this point in time. So you have the main underlying trend telling you it's bearish. You have uh, you have the you have the moving averages also telling you that as of this point in time it's also bearish as well. It's not telling you to come in yet because the, no reversal is still there. Now for people who want to who want to follow if it's actually oversold already. Looking at the RSI, it's oversold, but we don't have a cross up yet. There's no buy signal yet as of this point in time. If you try to look at this, the cross up here from here led to actually it trying to push up there. That was uh, that happened December 2019. That was a 20 plus percent push up for URC. That was a quick short term. Uh, it was a good quick trade for 20%. Anyways, should we see URC bounce from this level uh, brought about even by RSI or not RSI, uh, we could see a bounce here that could be a buy. Again, if it stays above the 118.85 level, buy. If you start buying there and you're a quick trader, again, I'll define this. This is for quick traders, not position traders. If you start buying there and it does not hold, you must cut uh, your losses as well. If it hits this level here, and, and fails to break out, that's a quick take profit. This level of buying and selling 118 to 136, this is around 12%. But if it breaks past this level, please remember shorter resistances are relatively weaker also. Hits this level, hits 148, uh, that could be another take profit area. This is around, uh, this entire trading range is around 25%. So you can take it as that. But from a position trading standpoint, uh, the way I see it is, until we see a clear reversal from its trend, it's not worth going into. A lot of the moving averages, a lot of the chart overlays are telling us that it's relatively bearish. MACD is also confirming that we don't have a buy signal as of this point in time as well. So that's where we are in URC. Just so we could measure it, though, I've, I've been doing this for the past videos also, that from the peak to where we are, as of yesterday's closing, it was down 42% for URC. So, uh, Next support that it's going to try to uh, tackle, no? it, it hit it last uh, 2018 was the 109 peso level. So let, let's see if it goes there and if that even holds. Because please remember, if this particular area does not hold, the next possible and stronger support will be very, very deep. And that's the difference between stocks that have moved up massively when they move up massively. And, very, and they move up very, very fast. They fail to develop support and resistances. They fail to consolidate. And on the downside, the drop would be, I think, larger or stronger as well. Next, I want to look at Cebu Pacific. Uh, the reason why I'm, I want to drill down also on Cebu Pacific is for the very reason that Cebu Pacific uh, will be one of the most hit uh, when it comes to the, to the crisis that we're seeing now. Uh, wh why do I say that? Uh, because as you all know, people are not traveling as much. People are relatively... Uh, scared to travel people are uh, no matter how cheap the prices are if people don't travel you will see a large decline on uh, on transport prices or at least on airfare uh, or at least on people traveling uh, the upside though for Cebu Pacific is that um, if you've been watching the news um, you uh, oil prices have dropped so this could somehow balance balance out uh, this could somehow balance out their costs as well, but they still need to get more sales. They need to get more revenue. So a couple of things. Number one, from a support and resistance perspective, from a uh, range perspective, here, here's how you can look at it. Just over the past uh, few weeks from January after it failed to hold the 200-day uh, moving average after breaking the 200 day moving average please remember this is a critical critical support level breaking this could cause this could cause the stock from move uh, to move to in, into something that's more bearish plus we have this as a trigger 
saying that it's bearish plus this cross over here this is a very very bearish signal and while all of that is happening macd is confirming all of the bearish moves that's also happening as well so you have this breakdown from the 88 level breakdown from the 200 day moving average as it started to break down then you have another breakdown from the 84 peso range as well and this 84 peso range is something that's pretty much a legit resistance why as it started to go down uh, we it built the support at the 733 level but tried to bounce back up and selling started to happen so you see the 50 day moving average really uh, protecting uh, really protecting the not protecting but uh, hindering the market from going up as well uh, what what what's a cause of people for people to uh, think about is basically this uh, from the 73 level you're seeing a breakdown 73 74 level you're seeing a breakdown from this range with a heavy barrage of selling so you have two red massive candlesticks and a breakdown from this level then another breakout from the 68.75 level that being said if you try to zoom in here or zoom at least zoom out you will possibly see this uh, there's a support level from the 64.35 level then uh, you could you could add this particular levels as well so smaller support so uh, for Cebu Pacific uh, one thing I'd like to mention is number one this particular upward move here was broken uh, the move from November 2018 all the way up to November 2019 a one-year upward swing which gave Cebu Pacific uh, somehow almost 70 plus percent upside is already over um, that upward trend was also uh, also capitulated by a consolidation here however as it started to consolidate this particular 88.6 level that protected it uh, what did not hold then plus all of the things that I've mentioned with the moving averages here now uh, since the upward trend is over the consolidation is also done what we're seeing now from this area is really a downward move a downward trend a shorter downward um, movement for the stock and so from a position trading standpoint as of this time still it's relatively bearish no recovery no reversal no down no upward move yet is in sight for quick traders though a uh, couple of things that could possibly happen the stock currently as of yesterday's closing is breaking down from the 68.75 level possible landing spots are 64.35 if 64.35 does not hold the next support levels will be 60 and 56.97 or roughly 57 pesos per share so uh let just wait for it until we hit those levels uh hitting those levels and if those levels does not hold you may see it retrace to the next levels that we're having here currently the stock is already in oversold levels that there's a heavy level of selling already uh there's there's no rsi cross up though i i just like to reiterate this when you see R, an rsi cross up it would be prudent to wait for it until it hits a level of support as well so uh we're now in the 13 minute mark uh, i'd like to talk about uh, maybe JG Summit. Now, I know there's other stocks under the Robinsons group, but of course, I don't want to drag this video for you guys as well. If you look at JG Summit here, uh, it's almost the same picture as Cebu Pacific. It's almost the same picture also as uh, as URC. You're seeing a stock that's out of an uptrend. You're seeing a stock that's retracing. You're seeing a stock that continually is pushing down. So for URC though, uh, for JG Summit though, uh, the stock just hit oversold levels already. Support level for JG Summit is at the 62.6 level. If you see it uh, today or in the next few days, fail to hold that level, possible retracement will bring it to the 55 peso level. But if it bounces from the 62.65 level, there's a shot that it could consolidate and it could move from 62 to 69 pesos per share. So possible uh, channel you know, from 62 to 69, this is a 10% uh, move. Possible retracement here will bring it to around 12%. I will give you a possible downside of 12% if the 62.6 level does not hold. So narrative, bounce from 62.6, the range will be 62.6 to 69.1. That's a 10% swing. Breakout from 69 will bring it to 76.25 pesos per share. Uh, if the 62.6 level does not hold, uh, downward swing will bring it to 55.5. And if I'll try to put the moving averages here, you'll notice it that short, mid, and long-term moving averages are all relatively bearish as of this point in time. So hope you guys are learning. Comment below if you're learning. Uh, uh, probably I'll end with Robinson's Retail Holdings. But before I go to Robinson's Retail Holdings, again, comment below if you like this format. No pictures, no edit, uh, no music. If you guys continually like this, I'll make more videos of, 
about this comment. I want this format. And also, just a quick plug. Uh, if you want to know more about what I do, the charts uh, that I use here, you want to know more about the School of Thought of Technical Analysis, I have I have traditional classes uh, down below. They're in the description for Manila, for London, for uh, Auckland, New Zealand, Sydney, Australia, Doha, Qatar, Dubai, Tokyo, and Singapore. All of them are in the description below. You can just click them for you to be able to uh, attend those events. But if you can't travel, you want to learn online. We have two online courses, one with Chinkitan. It's called Stock Market for Everyone. It's a Tagalog stock market course. The details are in the description below. And we also have uh, Make Money, Grow Money. It's a business entrepreneurship investing course. Also, it's an online course with Sean C that will teach you the basics of how you can uh, Invest in the market and start your own business. The details are in the description below. And, la and lastly, books. You can order them via Shopee from the description. Um, I, have the, I have books on the basics of the stock market, basics of investing, technical analysis, uh, and fundamental analysis. Well, all of them are in the description below. So I hope you guys get tremendous value from that. I hope that it's something that would also help you on how you live your life and how you can trade the markets with confidence. So lastly, let's do RRHI. If you look at RRHI, it's in a different fashion. Uh, RRHI from uh, from May 2019 was moving sideways, or if even you push it from March 2019, was pretty much moving sideways, and it got protected by the support at 70.85 and 67.91. So what we do know right now from all of this is number one, RRHI has broken down from the 70 peso support level. It has also broken down from the 67.91 support level. MACD is confirming that it's bearish. MACD is confirming uh, momentum headed down. Uh, all moving averages as well are relatively bearish. For those who attended our Stock Smart sessions, you know how significant uh, this particular juncture is in the bearishness of all of this. And if I'll zoom out here, If I'll zoom out, I'll try to zoom out. I'm not sure what's happening to my laptop. This entire consolidation period um, just confirmed this particular downward push that we're having still. So similar to URC, uh, RRHI somehow is still proceeding on a longer and bigger downtrend as well. Uh, you have its peak around November 2017. And from that point in time, it just continued to go down. Possible support level, you can peg a support level here. Uh, somewhere here to 57 peso mark. But if you notice it, I'll try to zoom in. Uh, yesterday, uh, RRHI broke down from that level. Uh, next possible support level now will be here and somewhere here close to its IPO date. So 54, 47, uh, RRHI is literally trying to, has dropped more than 50 plus percent from its highs already, from its all-time high as well so it's proceeding in its downtrend and if you also notice it uh, if i draw this entire area here this massive move up is already over we are now sitting in this phase of of rhi where it's massively in a downtrend already so this phase where it was moving up is over it has reversed into a downtrend if you are a position trader wait up until this downward push is is done wait uh, exercise patience up until we see uh, a legit reversal happening for the stock as well. So that's it for our HI. I'll try to talk about Robinson's Land in the next few videos. I'll try to see how it could possibly work, but just to make it very, very quick, uh, I'll just show it to you guys. Our HI, same thing uh, from our consolidation, started to break down as well. Support is at 19.75. If 19.75 does not hold, next possible support will be at the 17 peso level. Looking at it, this uptrend that started uh, April 2018 is also broken already. We're now seeing it retrace and start to go down as well. So there, I hope you guys learned a lot. But if you notice the grand narrative of things, all of the stocks are in a downtrend. If you're a position trader, it would be best to be in cash up until we see a clear reversal. If you are a quick trader while it's breaking down, uh, do not catch a falling knife. Wait until you see something significant start to come in and give you a logic that, hey, it's now time to actually put in money at this point in time. So that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. Expect more videos out throughout the day. And I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And God bless you all.